Hello everyone, thanks for watching News West 9 at 10. I'm Alex Camerata. A former youth pastor at Redeemer Church in Midland is facing charges of child pornography. That's according to members of the congregation. Tyler Dupnik is with us in the studio tonight. Tyler, what more do we know about this situation here? Yeah, Alex, we know that the situation involved an investigation that ranged all the way to Seifert, New York. That's located here in Nassau County. Now, that's all according to an arrest affidavit we received for 33-year-old Corey White of Midland. The affidavit says an investigation by the Nassau County Police Department resulted in the charges White now faces, which include access with intent to view child sexual abuse materials. Homeland Security Investigations assisted Nassau County PD in the investigation as well. An investigation that began from 15 cyber tips they received spanning from 2018 to today. Those involved someone with an IP address in Seifer, New York, who would upload child sexual abuse material and live stream it through Skype. That individual would communicate with numerous adults and minors on an online video chat site. And a screen recording from last March uh, showed White watching the incestual videos and reacting to them. Based on that information, an HSI special agent issued a search warrant for White's devices at his home in Midland. The Midland Police Department took White in for questioning on October 23rd, where he told detectives he had an interest in incestuous content because he found it, quote, exciting. He stated the last time he viewed child pornography materials was possibly May or June of this year. Now, if convicted, White faces up to 10 years in prison, up to life of supervised release, a $25,000 maximum fine and a $100 special assessment. His detention and preliminary hearing is set for tomorrow morning. News West 9 will be there and we'll keep you updated. Alex. All right, Tyler, thank you. And Dan, it's feeling more and more like winter with that cold that we've had to deal with here for the last two days. How chilly will it get overnight and how long is this front hanging around? Yeah, that's right. Tonight's setting up to be another chilly night already. Temperatures are pretty cold across the basin, 38 degrees right now from Midland. We actually uh, topped out today only at 43 for our high temperature. We got down to about 31, so a light freeze for Midland. And Odessa 23 was the record back in 2019. Thankfully, it didn't come anywhere close to that. Uh, we got some rainfall over the weekend. Most of it was that light drizzle that we saw all weekend long, basically about 0.13 uh, inches fell. That adds to our total to uh, 6.32 inches so far for this year, 2023. We're still well below average, though. We still need about five, uh, almost six inches to catch up for where we should be at this time of year but here we can see we have made a little bit of improvement uh, for our, our drought uh, so far so this is what we currently have across the basin we're still in the severe category for midland and odessa but things have improved a little bit over last week we can see here extreme uh, drought for midland and odessa for what we had last week so we are starting to meet to see a little bit uh, of improvements across the area temps across texas right now 39 in Abilene, it's 38 in Midland and Odessa, about 40 right now for San Angelo. Alex. And Dan, when the temperature starts dropping like this, some people need a place to stay. But for people who don't have a home, the Odessa Salvation Army, they are stepping in. It recently opened back up over the weekend after it was closed for renovations. The dorms and fire suppression systems, they were fixed up along with the walls and floors there at the shelter. They had a soft opening on Saturday, and that is good news for people who need that temporary place to stay while looking for some stability really just keeping people alive so that they can turn around whatever the situation or whatever the cause was for their homelessness to get out of that situation and become self-sufficient again. That's kind of the goal. The end goal is to get people back on their feet, so to speak. But even if it is temporary, a hot meal and a shower can do wonders for someone's mental state while also giving them a little bit of inspiration to move on. We can provide someone with a warm place to stay, when we can provide someone with a meal for their stomachs, when we can give them a shower um, when they haven't had one in days, um, it really changes their outlook on their situation. And it means it, it tells them, I can do this. I can get back on my feet. I just gotta, you know, keep, I gotta continue on a little bit longer. The cold weather station will be open whenever that temperature drops below 42 degrees. 
New tonight at 10, the Odessa Police Department needs your help finding a missing man. Take a closer look here and see if you might recognize him. This is 46 year old Alejandro Valles. A family member told OPD that he's been missing since early September. He's about six foot one and weighs around 220 pounds. He doesn't have a vehicle either. If you have any information about this case or if you might know where Alejandro is, you're asked to call 432-335-4609. We're getting our first look tonight at two suspects arrested in Ector County for a deadly shooting at Dollar General and a body found in Penwell. Let's tell you about that shooting at Dollar General on Friday night. This is 18 year old Victor Balderrama. His charges relate to tampering with a human corpse and tampering with evidence. Ector County Sheriff Mike Griffiths tells us his arrest comes after 18 year old Kevin Roman was found shot at the store on 3rd and Knox. His bond has been set at $75,000. And this is 20 year old Ethan Ibarra. The sheriff says he called their office on Saturday and led investigators to a location near Penwell where they found the body of 17 year old Dylan Zubia. We still don't know how Zubia died, but Ibarra is charged with his murder. His bond is set at $175,000. State troopers are investigating a deadly hit and run that happened in Reagan County. We're told 37 year old Junior Jones from Big Spring was walking on Highway 67 after his car ran out of gas. Troopers say that's when he was hit by a car from behind. That driver then took off and Jones later died at the scene. If you have any information, you're asked to call DPS. Tonight, an 18 year old is facing murder charges after being accused of selling fentanyl to another teen. According to the affidavit, police say earlier this month on October 2nd, Nathaniel Martinez was accused of selling pills laced with fentanyl to another teen, 16 year old Damien Aguilar, who later died from an overdose. The report says Odessa police found Aguilar unresponsive and he was taken to Medical Center Hospital. In that affidavit, witnesses told police when they tried waking him up for school, they said he wasn't okay and lost consciousness. He was later given Narcan and received CPR and the report says police found counterfeit blue M30 pills that were found in his room. He was airlifted to Lubbock where he was pronounced brain dead. Martinez is charged with murder, manufacturing delivery of a controlled substance causing death. Hector County ISD is addressing another potential threat to school safety, this time aimed at school buses. District officials warning parents of students who ride the bus. They're taking precautionary measures after hearing of an anonymous threat. Parents were told district police got word from the FBI office in El Paso late Friday night of a threat toward those buses. The call was found out to have come from Southern California and did not name a specific city or mention ECISD in any way, but the anonymous caller attributed the threat to the same Odessa man as last week's elementary school threat that you might remember. Police do not view this as a credible threat and ECISD will continue to work with local, state and federal agencies on this investigation. And we're told district police have been actively patrolling the bus barn around the clock and all buses are scheduled to run regular routes at their normal times. And with this weather getting colder that we told you about, that also means the opportunity for illnesses to spread around. There's now a surge in strep throat that's causing a shortage in antibiotics. A number of adults as well as children are coming into emergency rooms and hospitals now dealing with strep throat. But I've, I've seen a lot of patients that are showing a positive for strep. Um, and uh, when you're seeing a spike in strep, you're, you're giving more, you're giving out more antibiotics. And naturally, that might might lead to a shortage of antibiotics as well. And with strep making a big comeback this year, it's hard for doctors to get their hands on the drug amoxicillin. And that can start treating strep within the first 24 hours. You know, with strep infections, uh, antibiotics is the main treatment. Uh, penicillin type of uh, group of antibiotics like amoxicillin. When you're seeing a spike in strep, you're, you're giving more, you're giving out more antibiotics, and naturally that might might lead to a shortage of antibiotics as well. And uh, strep does affect uh, children the most between the ages of 5 and 15. They tend to be the group that mostly comes up positive for strep throat.
We are one sleep away from Halloween, and if you want to take the kiddos to some local events to just make their trick or treating a bit more fun, here's some ideas for you. The Midland Park Mall is hosting its Halloween tomorrow night from 5 until 7. They will be handing out candy to trick or treaters in Center Court. That's near the Coach and Men Dillard stores. And make sure to have those costumes on, of course. There will also be a selfie wall to take some pictures. For all you folks in Midland with a furry friend, you're going to want to check this out tomorrow, too. Midland and Animal Services is hosting a trunk or treat event tomorrow afternoon from 4 until 6. That's at their building located at 1200 North Fairgrounds Road. They won't just be handing out candy. They will be holding free adoptions, microchips, and they'll also have a photo booth so you can and your pals can have some uh, document Halloween fun. And there are Halloween events happening in Odessa too. The Odessa Police Department and Odessa Fire Rescue, they're hosting their annual trunk or treat event tomorrow morning from nine until 11. That's at the Central Fire Station. And then tomorrow night, downtown Odessa is hosting treats on the street from four to seven. Participating businesses are handing out candy and you also have the chance to win some pretty cool prizes. Finally, the Ector County Health Department, they are having a haunted house event from one until seven tomorrow night. That is at their location at 221 North Texas Avenue. It's the start to the week and almost the end of October. Just where did that time go? But the news never stops for anyone, not even a holiday. Here's Victor Lopez with a preview of what they're cooking up tomorrow morning on News West 9 Sunrise. Happy Monday. Can I go ahead and call it Halloween Eve? So yeah, the big day is tomorrow. Kids of all ages will be munching on that Halloween candy, but you want to keep smiling. So we'll tell you what you need to stay away from to keep your teeth healthy. And speaking of, if you've bought some, well, you already know, if you still need to stock up, you're in for another fright. The scariest part of Halloween this year, the price of candy. This and more tomorrow on Sunrise. All right, Victor, thank you. We have a new speaker of the house and you may not know much about him. Still to come at 10, our Verify team finds out where Mike Johnson stands on some key issues. Plus the latest on the United Auto Workers strike. We'll tell you the impacts it's had on other industries and some progress on a tentative agreement that was reached today. We're back in two and a half minutes. Just in time for Halloween, the producer of Texas Chainsaw Massacre came home to visit his alma mater in Garland. Ron Bozeman graduated from Garland High School in 1965. In addition to his horror films, Bozeman has worked on dramas like HBO's Succession. Earlier today, he talked with cinema students about his career path. The program in Garland called Real Owl Cinema is the first fine arts film class that's offered in a Texas public school. school Auto union workers in Arlington are cautiously optimistic about their tentative deal with General Motors. The agreement would end their strike and boost wages by 25% over four years. Now experts say the union strategy might embolden workers in other industries. Here's more on the impact. No box. The picket lines worked. No box. No box. And though they still need to formally sign off, union workers say they're comfortable with the UAW's tentative agreement with GM. It just means to put money away and pay for things without having to go into debt. Auto manufacturing is the latest industry drawn to the negotiating table by striking workers. This year, healthcare professionals, writers, even baristas have secured victories in talks with their employers. Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett says labor is having a moment. Unions stand for the idea of people power. It sent this message of a uh, time out for the have and the have not fight that we continue to see. Um, the haves only have because of workers. Economists say inflation and concerns about artificial intelligence have encouraged more unionization. And post pandemic, Americans' perception of work life balance has changed. Labor markets have been pretty good and it's relatively low unemployment. And so I think people are feeling like um, they they may have a little bit of leverage. But TCU's David Allen says that could change when the economy weakens. The Bureau of Labor Statistics data shows the percentage of working Americans who belong to a union actually dropped from 2021 to 2022. Still, the auto deals are momentous, especially because the union took a risk striking against all three manufacturers at once. Experts say employees in other industries now have proof similar bold strategies are effective, at least in this economy.
After weeks of chaos, the U.S. House of Representatives finally has a speaker. Where does he stand on key social and economic issues, though? Our national reporter, Casey Decker, he found that out for us. Mike Johnson is one of the lowest profile representatives ever elected as Speaker of the House. Even if you follow politics, there's a good chance you'd never heard of him before last week. But you might have seen claims like these, that his policies are extremist regarding everything from same-sex marriage to Social Security. So using these sources, let's verify where Mike Johnson stands on a few key issues. First, the 2020 election. Many people claim Johnson tried to overturn it. That's true. Not only did he vote against certifying President Biden's victories in Arizona and Pennsylvania, Johnson was the architect of a failed legal argument submitted to the Supreme Court in favor of overturning the results. Second, abortion. It's true that Johnson is one of the staunchest opponents of abortion rights in Congress. He's sponsored or co-sponsored several bills limiting access nationwide, none of which passed. Third, same-sex marriage. Johnson has long opposed it. In the early 2000s, he was a lawyer for a conservative Christian group and argued on numerous occasions for laws that restricted gay rights. Last year in Congress, he voted against a law that cemented nationwide recognition of same-sex marriage. But in his first interview after being elected speaker, Johnson said he won't try to undo the existing legal protections on same-sex marriage. I respect the rule of law. When the Supreme Court issued the Obergefell opinion, that became the law of the land. Johnson's also been accused of wanting to cut Social Security and Medicare. That claim needs context. Johnson has been a strong advocate of reforms to these programs, and he's supported proposals like raising the retirement age, which would cut Social Security spending. But Johnson argues such measures are required to keep the program solvent. He has not said he would do away with them. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. Dan, we are dancing around that freezing line again here tonight, but tomorrow night, trick-or-treaters will be wrapping up. How's it going to look out there for them as well? Yeah, that's right. We've got another light freeze in store for tonight. Tomorrow night, Halloween night, we're going to see another light freeze across the area, but temperatures do start to warm up gradually through the rest of this week. I'll have your full forecast coming up. Hey, welcome back everyone. Here's your belly black picture of the day. This was taken by Rena Garza out in McKamey, Texas. Beautiful sunset. By the way, thank you for sending that in to us. Outside right now, 38 degrees. It's another cold night already setting up. I probably don't have to tell you all that. It's frigid out there. Once again, 76% humidity. So if humidity keeps rising, we could actually see some light fog by tomorrow morning. Improbable, but definitely a real concern across the Permian Basin. Outside temperatures are cold no matter where you are 38 degrees in Pecos right now 38 for Midland it's 35 right now in Marfa we're already below freezing in Guadalupe Pass at 30 degrees so tonight all around it's going to be even colder than what we saw last night next couple of hours 35 around 2 a.m nothing but clear skies tonight and this is part of the reason why tonight's going to be so cold is because clouds act like a blanket and when we don't have a blanket all the heat just escapes up into outer space so tonight's going to be another Cold night for Midland and Odessa. Looking at 32 already by 7 a.m. Low temperatures, 30 for Midland, 30 in Odessa. We'll hit 32. And Fort Stockton, 29 uh, even out in Pecos. So we could see some mid-20s in a couple locations, especially further up to the north, 26 and Hobbs, 26. And Seminole, it's going to be a frigid night once again. So we've got cold conditions. Light north winds are continuing, but... If you don't like the cold weather, don't worry. It's not going to stick around forever. We're going to see high pressure temporarily move back into the state, and that's going to return southerly flow out of Mexico, and we should see warmer conditions by next week, or really the end of this week into this weekend. So we're going to see some improvement across the area, but for tomorrow, it's going to be another cold day. We'll be at 31, stepping out the door, coming back home, about 54. So still well below average for this time of year, but... It's better than today, at least. So I think we can all be grateful for that. No precipitation whatsoever. We're done with seeing rainfall for quite some time is what it appears. East winds at 10 miles per hour. So those winds are already beginning to shift around to the south uh, by tomorrow uh, evening. So 56 for our high temperature for both Midland and Odessa. That's about 10, 15 degrees below average across the area. So it's gonna be cold out there, 55 
in Fort Stockton. We'll hit 56 out in Marfa and 50 in Fort Davis. Everyone's in the 50s. Trick or treat forecast. It's going to be pretty cold out there. Not quite as cold as tonight, though. 54 around 4 p.m. as people are maybe headed out uh, beginning the night. 49 by 7 p.m. And we'll be in the 40s for the majority of the night, especially once the sun goes down. It is going to be cold out there. So I suggest that people bundle up or at least wear a costume that uh, keeps you warm to some degree because it is going to be cold out there. Uh, 65 on Thursday, though. So we start to heat up pretty quickly. Those south winds are going to return and heat us up to the 80s by the weekend. Jenna? Hey, Dan, I might have to do that dance that Frankenstein was doing to keep warm, it seems like, as we go trick or treat next next day tomorrow <laughs> so coming up next we'll jump back into week 10 of the high school football season with top place The 2023 regular season is quickly coming to a close and we've had the privilege of seeing some show stopping plays up until this point and that was no exception here in week 10. It's time to see who you chose to win this week's version of Game Time's top play. And the winner takes us out to a big spring. The Nathan Vasquez interception takes home 45% of the vote. And this week's honor of top play. Let's check out that play one more time. This turnover came against the passing attack of Lubbock Estacado. The signal caller drops back and chucks the ball deep downfield and Vasquez flies in and plucks the ball out of the air for the INT. And the bi-district volleyball playoff started for many this evening. Here's a look at some of the scores that we have from some of our local teams. The magical season comes to an end for Greenwood. They would lose 3-0 to Canyon and Odessa Compass Academy. They complete the sweep of Crane to add to some hardware to the trophy case with a 3-0 win. In our local six days, they start their playoff journeys tomorrow night. Midland Legacy will host El Paso East Lake tomorrow at 6 p.m. The Rebels were bumped from the by district round just a season ago. This year looks to make it the second to the second round again as it did in 2021. Permian takes a trip out to El Paso to square off against Coronado. The Panthers are searching for back to back first round wins. And the World Series headed out to Phoenix for game three. The series was knotted up at one headed into tonight and the Rangers reclaimed the advantage with tonight's three to one win over the Diamondbacks. The Corey Seager two run homer in the third inning put this game out of reach. Game four stays in Arizona. That next game starts tomorrow night at 7 p.m. That's it for sports. We'll be right back. Tomorrow's high temperature is 56 for Midland and Odessa. It's going to be pretty chilly out there across the, the area, 55 for Fort Stockton. So still about 10 to 15 degrees below average. Here's your trick or treating forecast. You know, you might want to bundle up if uh, your costume uh, isn't going to keep you warm because look at these temperatures. They are going to be pretty chilly uh, here, especially once the sun goes down, unless you're moving a whole lot around like this uh, Frankenstein. Probably not going to stay warm out there, 43 around 9 p.m. So it is going to be chilly. Thankfully, no rain. So last week we were thinking it might rain a little bit on Halloween. It no longer looks like that's the case, which is always fantastic news. Here's a look at your nine day, though. 80s by the weekend. Yeah, he's uh, got us beat on how to warm up. Like Jenna said, all you got to do, folks, is just yeah. do that tomorrow night. I think I'm going to try it. Probably <laughs> not on air, but. That'll be a good idea. That's all the time we have here tonight at 10. We'll see you tomorrow morning on Sunrise.